third part of the Tim Sort series. Uh, in this video, we are going to be learning how to merge two arrays in a efficient way. So the way we are going to handle this is by looking at an array A and an array B of size N and size M. Now the standard way that merge sort actually performs a merge of two sorted arrays is to take an array of size M plus N and then pick up the smallest element from A and B, push it onto the first position and you know continue doing this till A and B are exhausted and then have a large array uh, which is a sorted array of elements in A and B of size M plus N. The temporary space required for this as you can see is M plus N which is pretty large. This is the most efficient way in which you can do a merge sort. But imagine an array which has been given to you as this large. Now you have two chunks in it, chunk one and chunk two. Over here, if you're trying to do a merge sort, the maximum space, extra space that you require is the minimum of chunk one size n and chunk two size m. Okay. The reason for this is because uh, over here, you need a temporary space to push in all the elements when you're actually merging two arrays. Over here, you are going to be merging in place. So let's have a look at how that happens. Let's say we have the first chunk from index zero to index five and the second chunk from six to nine. And what's happened is because we have these two chunks, we need to merge them to get the final sorted array. So using the algorithm that we talked about up there, we're taking the minimum of the two size four and we're going to copy all elements 12, 19, 21, and 22 over here. Also, we are going to take all the elements in the first array and shift them four positions to the right. Okay, so that happens to be four positions to the right gives me three over here. Okay, so now we have shifted all elements by four. And these four elements are irrelevant. They are going to be replaced immediately. And we'll see how. So for the first element, we have uh, 12 coming in, that's the first element, with the element 3, shifted by 4 positions. So between 3 and 12, 3 wins. So we populate the first index with value 3. Similarly, now 12 and 5 are in a contest where 5 wins and comes over here. So this pointer has now been pushed to this point and 12 is still the smallest element in this array. Uh, 17 and 12, 12 wins. So 12 is populated over here and we have this pointer sting where it is, but 12 can get, getting kicked out of the array and coming to 19. At 19 and 17, we see 17 is smaller. So we, the pointer is incremented. 22 and 19, 19 wins. 21 and 22, 21 wins. Now here's the interesting thing. At 22 and 22, which element should we choose? Now there's something called stability in sort. So uh, if you want a stable sort, it means that an index which appeared before with the same element value should be picked for an index which came after with the same element value. Basically if three, three, seven comes in and there's one here, then this three should appear before this three in the sorted array also. I mean, when you're, when you're finally sorting the array. A better example would be 11 and then three. Yeah. What if you have this? When you're sorting the array, this three should come first, this three should come second, and this three should come third. All right, that's called a stable sort. It doesn't jumble the order of the elements which are, have equal value. So in this case, um, this 22 should appear before this one. Okay, that's what stability means. Although we don't really care because we just have numbers and they are all the same to us. So 22 comes in and this element is used up. So we come to 107. Uh, at 107, of course, this 22 wins. So we have run out of this area and then we do a system copy of these elements. So these two elements are untouched. Uh, but you're seeing that we have array of size 10 where eight elements were touched. But the good news of course is that we used just four elements as temporary variables like uh, four element temp array. And having this, what we can do is we can always take the smaller chunk and have a temporary array of the size of the smaller chunk, ensuring that we are not using a lot of extra space. Okay, using this, we can reduce the maximum space requirement, additional space requirement of the algorithm 
uh, 2 if the size is n then we can make it n by 2 because the minimum between two chunks of size n by 2 and n by 2 is n by 2 so that's the maximum additional space requirement we need and uh, therefore we have made the merging process much more efficient because we are able to merge in place using just the smallest chunk size to put things in context we are doing all this because we want to reduce the constant factor right uh, constant factor of merge sort into n log n minus x now we have reduced uh, the number of levels uh, by by a factor of x over here and we want to reduce the constant factor also of course uh, reducing the size of the temporary array is going to affect the constant factor so that's what we were targeting here what else could do that well merge sort is really efficient when it comes to two arrays of similar size so if the two arrays are of similar size what we want to do is store these arrays in a stack why a stack because merge sort as you know is recursive recursion effectively means that there's a system stack which is storing all of the information relevant to a function call instead we are going to do it ourselves we're going to use the stack that we are going to define now a chunk in uh, the tim sort algorithm is known as a run okay a run because the chunk is sorted it's non-decreasing so it's like you're running in the elements you're increasing continuously or at least you're not decreasing so that's what a run is so this stack of runs is going to be storing each run as a start index and an end index such that all elements between the start and end index are non-decreasing okay and what we're going to be doing in the merge procedure is taking two of these runs adjacent runs and merging them because it's a stack you can only merge the top two runs no this is a special kind of stack that we have built where the top three runs are always taken into consideration we can merge only adjacent runs so which means these two runs will be merged or these two runs will be merged okay so that is the first and second run or second and third run will be merged why is this because we want stability in the sorting algorithm and we are not going to go into too much detail of making this algorithm stable but this is the reason why we are merging just adjacent ones otherwise you can you could have merged the last one with the first one also you know there's no problem there so till now if you found the stack algorithm very confusing there's some code to explain it in a in a good way uh, what we have here is every time that the stack is filled some invariants have to be satisfied and so the stack checks itself uh, and every time it checks itself if it needs to do some sort of operation which is the merge operation merging two runs then it again checks itself after that merge so this keeps happening in a loop till the invariants are all satisfied okay let's have a look at the code if the number of runs are greater than two greater than equal to which means that if there's not just one chunk remaining well one chunk means that your entire array is sorted whatever you had till now so that's useless we are mainly concerned with this bit now if the run number two which is the third run effectively uh, is greater in length than the first two runs the top two runs okay then we have to look at whether the top run is greater than the second run then we do a merge otherwise the else we are effectively breaking so that's good that's what we want to do we want to break from this invariant or else we are again doing something so when does the when does the continuous checking end let us visualize the stack the top two elements a and b can be merged together to form a plus b if we note down the invariants c is greater than a plus b so even after merging the resultant merged uh, run will be smaller than c going down the stack we see that this invariant extends to d is greater than c plus b and e is greater than d plus c now you can see that for every run the run, two runs above it when merged together will be smaller than the current run this is very interesting because there is a series a very famous series which actually has behavior like this and that is the fibonacci series i don't think the fibonacci series has any relevance to this algorithm but it's interesting that it pops up out of nowhere uh, in tim sort the main reason we have this kind of an invariant is because we want to merge the arrays efficiently 
and merging two arrays of similar lengths is an efficient operation. So as you can see here, Tim sort is going to be merging A with B to get B plus A. Then we take that result B plus A and merge it with C. So these two arrays are close to each other in size. The merged result will have size C plus B plus A, which in turn will be merged with the fourth run D, uh, both elements having similar size and so on and so forth. So at every merge, you're seeing two elements having similar size, two elements meaning two runs having similar sizes, and that makes the merging process efficient. At the end of the Tim sort algorithm, we are going to be merging all of these runs to get a single array, which is in sorted fashion. Finally, there are two cases when the invariant may not be satisfied. This is possible when the top two runs have a length greater than the third run. Uh, in that case, what we are going to do is we are going to merge the second run with the smaller of the first and the third run. All right, the second run is always going to be used in the merge as we have talked about earlier, and it will be merged with the top run if it is smaller or the third run if that is smaller. If the third run is larger than the top two runs, there's one other case where we'll merge. And that is if the top run, the run that we have just added to the stack is greater in size than the second run. So this will be breaking the invariant and we'll have to then merge the top two runs. By this, we are ensuring that the runs are sorted in order of their lengths. So the smallest run is at the top and it keeps getting larger as we go down the stack. All of these invariants help us make the merge process much more efficient, which makes Tim sort more efficient in general. This is the third part of the Tim sort series. Thank you so much for taking your time to understand this very technical algorithm. I'll be releasing the fourth part, which will have some sort of artificial intelligence to make the runs even more efficiently merged. If you want a notification for that, you can subscribe below. And if you like the video, hit the like button. I'll see you next time.